After this last year, I've picked up so many of these mowers that they're all beginning to look the same to me. I find them online, pick them up and fix them, or they go into the abyss that is my storage unit, only to come back out in the light of day months later. The problem is that sometimes I don't remember how or where I got the stuff I find, but to be honest, it really doesn't matter. It's here now, so I guess it's time to see if I can make a few bucks or if we end up wasting my time on it. In today's video, we're working on this lawnmower that, if I recall, does not start. It was in the back of the storage unit, and I guess I sort of forgot about it, but to be honest, most of the items I find don't start or have some other serious issues, and more than likely, this one will be the same. Now, I'm going to try and repair this mower. However, it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. Now, we're only going to mention what these other options could be. We don't have enough time to look into them. But if you need more information on these options, you're welcome to ask as many questions as you need to. The first thing I want to do is look over the mower and see if there's anything seriously wrong with it, but this one looks to be complete and in decent shape considering its age. Now by the wear on the front tires, we can also assume that it hasn't been used all that much, which is either a blessing or a curse. You'll see what I mean by that here in a bit. Also, if you want to see how this particular front wheel drive mower competes with other drive systems as far as pulling power is concerned, there's a link at the top of the screen for a video where we find out. The next thing I want to check are the fluids in the mower. Now most often I find that the fuel tanks will still have plenty of gasoline in them. However, when I check the oil, it's hit or miss that it has any oil in it. And I guess engines only need gasoline and oil is overrated as a lubricant for moving parts. Fortunately, this engine seems to have plenty of oil in it and it also looks pretty fresh as well. So we may not have to do an oil change for once. The next thing we need to do is a test start, so we'll need to get to the carb's throat, which means we can also examine the air filter, and the weird thing is that it seems to be brand new. More than likely, they were trying to get it to work again before giving up and giving it away. Now, for some reason, the spark plug is also missing, which doesn't make any sense to me, but I'll need to replace it so we can try and get it started. If it runs, I'll then try and see if it'll start the way it's supposed to on its own. Luckily, it started and ran for a few seconds on the fuel that we put into the carb's throat. That confirms that this engine has a working ignition system and also enough compression from the engine. The next thing to do is to open the fuel valve, let the gasoline fill the bowl, and then try starting it. So as expected, the engine did not start. In fact, it didn't even try to start. Since we know from the first test it has spark and compression, and after adding fuel it was able to start and run, it points to either the gasoline in the tank or a carb that needs servicing to be the issue. I also want to check on the blade and see if it needs to be sharpened, and this is when I realized they had installed a mulching blade upside down. Now it's still going to get the job done, but the grass is going to look terrible afterwards. I'm not going to worry about it just yet, instead I want to show you something much more interesting. Now at this point I would normally talk about lubricating the wheels, that way it'll be easier to push around, but sometimes when you buy a quality brand mower, you get bald bearings in the wheels. That means we don't have to worry about lubing them, just keep them clean and you should be fine. Now the front wheels don't get the same treatment, but since it's front wheel drive, not lubricating them won't be that big of an issue. Before we get too far along, I'm going to do a quick cleaning on this mower. Now it's not that dirty, but the reason I want to clean it is so I can see if there's any issues that some of the dirt might be hiding on these Honda engines. Sometimes they leak oil from this side of the engine from the governor shaft, so I need to see if it's leaking. If you do find a leak, you'll need to install a small oil seal on the shaft. The other reason for cleaning it is, of course, for a better resale. Now if I kept all the mowers I've ever found and fixed, I would have more than an acre of mowers and since we're not allowed to have that sort of thing on our property, I would have to get rid of them either by selling them or donating them. Now I could sell them cheap, but I wouldn't get a fair price for my labor and definitely not for the parts I sometimes have to put on them. So what I find is that they sell better when they don't look like they just came out of the dumpster by the school. Now you don't need to clean it and if you don't want to or don't feel like it's necessary, I can totally respect your decision. As long as the mower starts, runs, and cuts, I'm sure the buyer will totally overlook the oil, dirt, and grass covering the mower and they would never try to offer you a lower offer because it doesn't look brand new. I just find that I have less haggling when the mower looks the best it can versus when it looks used. 
So here's the mower after a very quick cleaning, and I think the paint looks much brighter after a good cleaning. Overall, this mower seems to look a lot nicer and more presentable than before the cleaning. Now, nobody's going to buy a lawnmower that doesn't start and run, so we better get to fixing it, otherwise I'll never get rid of it. The first thing I want to do is to drain the gasoline from the tank and see if there's any water in it, or if it's the wrong shade of orange. Now, over time, gasoline will go from a light yellow color to a dark brown as it gets more exposure to oxygen. Also, any water that might be in the gasoline will sink to the bottom and we'll be able to spot it fairly easily in a glass jar. So here's the gasoline from the tank, and it's a light yellow color, so it's not fresh, and if I had to guess, I'd say it was almost a year old. Now, even though this gasoline is past its sell-by date, it's still usable, although it won't have the same punch when compared to when it's new. The next step is to take off the belt cover for more clearance. That way we can take off the air filter base so we can take off the carb for an inspection and cleaning. So I was getting ready to remove the air filter base when I noticed the old gummy fuel at the base of the choke flap, and I hate to say it, but this is not a good sign. It basically gives me a glimpse of what's inside the carb, and I'm not looking forward to seeing it. This typically means there was gasoline left in the tank while it was in storage for more than a couple of years. If we get the carb off the engine and there's corrosion inside it, there's absolutely no reason why I would even bother trying to clean it other than wasting my time. Hopefully, it's not that bad. Now, since there's no drain bolt on this carb, we can still get a sample of the gasoline that's at the bottom of the bowl by loosening the bolt that holds the bowl to the carb. And I can already see an issue with the gasoline. It doesn't smell like gasoline anymore. In fact, it smells kind of sweet. The color of the gasoline is also much darker than what came out of the tank as well, which means that even though the fuel was fresh in the tank, the carb still has the old stuff in it. I also see another bad sign, which is the stain in the inlet to the engine. This stain means the car, but was slowly leaking fuel into the engine for quite some time. That means there might be some gasoline in the oil, and we'll need to change it pretty soon. Now, after getting the bowl off the car, but we can see that all the signs were correct. So what you're seeing is a layer of residue left by the old gasoline. Now, it's still soft, luckily, which means it'll be easier to clean off versus when it's completely dried up. Spraying some carb cleaner on it and agitating it seems to be all that's needed to remove it, but unfortunately, this is only a small part of the job. We still have to take the carb apart and clean the same residue from everything inside the carb, otherwise it could keep it from working the way it's supposed to. This is probably the one time I could really use an ultrasonic cleaner. The reason I don't have one is because I don't wish to rely on it as a cure-all because it's not one. Now, I think an ultrasonic cleaner is a wonderful tool to have at your disposal. However, if a carb is really bad, I don't think it's going to save it. There's only so much it can do. Now, for light to mildly dirty, sticky carbs like this one, it should work just fine. However, if it's corroded due to water that started to pit the metal, I think it's best to just replace a carb once it gets to that point. Now, at the moment, the carbs are also very affordable, but once they start disappearing from the market, the prices will go up. That's, of course, happening because of battery electric stuff flooding the marketplace. It seems the residue is also stopping us from getting the fuel jet and the emulsion tube out of the carb. That's how bad this stuff can get. I find the best way to store a lawnmower is by running it until there's no fuel left in it. That way there's nothing to dry up or leave a residue inside the fuel system. I also like doing it this way because you don't have to go out of your way to buy a fuel stabilizer or having to run the mower once in a while during the winter months. Once we get the tube out of the carb, we can either clear all the openings in it, or you can use the carb cleaner to blast out any clogs in it. The same goes for the fuel jet, although I find it best to follow it up with a wire, only because this part is typically extremely clogged, while the tube never seems to get that bad. Once they're clean and cleared, it's finally time to clean the rest of the carb as well. Like I said, the cleaning goes on and on, and to be honest, if you want to save yourself from a big headache and possibly even save yourself some time, I would consider replacing the carb. Now, we're almost done with the carb, but we just have one last thing we need to clean, and this one is really important. So this is the pilot jet, and we need to make sure it's cleared, otherwise it'll cause the engine to surge while it's running. Now the opening is extremely small, and the best way to clean it is to use carb cleaner, or if you don't have some, a single wire from a fine wire brush also works. Once this is cleared, it's now time to put the carb back together. So what happens if you put the carb back onto the engine, start it up, and there's a fuel issue with the carb causing it to run poorly? Well, you have a few choices, and it's up to your level of patience as to which choice you're going to make. 
Now, I would never say to someone that they took the easy route by buying a new car, but versus taking the time to clean the OEM one, like I said, they're dirt cheap right now, and yes, they come from overseas, and if you're opposed to using them, then buy an OEM carb. It's a little bit more expensive, but then again, if it makes you feel better, then so be it. The only advice I have is that if you don't want to do this repair again in a few years, take some extra precautions and you should be good. Another option to keep from doing this repair is to use 100% gasoline that's ethanol free. However, from what I've been told, this is sometimes very difficult to get. For that situation, I would search on this platform on how to remove the ethanol from the gasoline you're using. I hate to say it, but eventually I think 100% gasoline will soon go away, which means I'll have to be ready when it happens. Unfortunately, after doing the rough edit for this video, it's going to be much longer than I'm comfortable producing, so this is where we're going to have to leave the project. Just as a spoiler for the next part of this video, things don't work out the way they're supposed to, and it's going to cost me more time than I was expecting to figure out what happened to it. So in the end, this was a simple case of poor storage and leaving fuel in the tank, which almost cost us a new carb, but I think we'll be able to save this one. If you're unsure on how to get your mower ready for storage, when in doubt, just run it out. So my question is, is it worth buying an expensive ultrasonic cleaner to use on my equipment? For me, it might be because I work on so many of these, but what about the average person? Would it be worth it for them? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.